Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Uh, today is uh, Thursday, May 27th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we have John, what do we have? John 7, verses 32 through 53. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we won't find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now when he said this about the Spirit, now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some of the people said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David, and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there was a division among the people over him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers then came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why did you not bring him? The officers answered, No one ever spoke like this man. The Pharisees answered to them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not lo know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, who, gone, who had gone to him before and who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. And they went each to his own house. <laughs> in, Mary, <laughs> Mary. in many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in his last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, uh, more and more and more of people not getting Jesus and just uh, the crowds confused by what he says and what they're seeing and hearing. Uh, the Pharisees are just grumbling and complaining. They're snapping at people. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's absolute chaos surrounding Jesus, as usual. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the people are completely baffled by what he says. Um, like in, in the first... Uh, verses 33 through 36. I mean, it's like they question every every part of what he says. I mean, every bit. And they're just like, what does he mean? What does he mean? What does he mean by that? What, what could that mean? And they're just, they're all over the map, and they have no clue what he's referring to. Okay? And then, um, and, and Jesus doesn't try to explain it to him. He's, he moves on, and he talks about uh, living uh, uh, rivers of living water that will flow from people um, if they uh, come to Jesus and drink. And uh, this generates some new buzz among the people, and some of them say, well, this this is the prophet. Uh, they say, oh, no, this is the Christ. So, you know, even even better. Um, but even at that, once they, they kind of start putting these pieces together and, and hearing what he's saying, and, it, and there's hints of it, like okay, but then they immediately go to oh well, well, but he's he's from Galilee, and is the Christ supposed to be from Galilee? No, he's supposed to be from Bethlehem, so it can't possibly be him. And they're just they're all over the map. And uh, the Pharisees, of course, um, you know, they just want to do away with him. And it's a um, you know this this is a, a continuation of, of basically the the themes that we've been have 
had for the last few days. Um, so there's really nothing all that much different from what we've been talking about here. But certainly one of the things that kind of um, this reminds me of and, and brings to mind is just how, um, how difficult it can be to convince somebody that Jesus is the Son of God, um, basically to um, bring somebody to faith. And uh, I've got a few thoughts on that. <laughs> Surprised. But, um, you know, I, I know in, in talking to people, that's, that's a, it's a big frustration because they want to know the right words to say. They want to know what it is that's going to take for, for the person that they're working on, you know, to, to be a believer. And usually, um, usually this isn't strangers. Usually it's, it's, it's family, it's close friends, it's, it's, it's the, our loved ones, um, which m- makes the, um, the urgency the desire and urgency to, to for them to receive the faith to, to to become a believer in Jesus Christ, it just makes the the, the task more intense and more um, immediate. Yeah, that works. And um, it's hard because kind of what we see here. I mean, Jesus can say all the right things, and people can hear it and get, be even on the right track, but still not get there. And one of the things that um, yeah, I've been thinking about a lot lately, not really sure why, <laughs> maybe some of the stuff I've been reading, uh, but just all this focus on um, what, what can we do to, to better witness to people? What can we do to, to spread the word in order to... Um, to bring people to faith, you know what? What are the the, the strategies? What are the, the tricks? You know, are there any kind of um, you know best case practices, whatever? And um, you know, it's just becoming very much kind of very clear to me in that uh, you know we we can't bring anybody to faith. I mean, I, I I've known this for quite some time. <laughs> I mean, this isn't news, but just kind of seeing how how even we acknowledge it, we say, you know, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings faith, who delivers faith, who does, and he does what he, he does. We, we can just plant seeds, you know, and the Holy Spirit will act on them in whatever way the Holy Spirit wants to. I think we know this as Christians, and yet in practice, I think we forget it a lot. And, um, which isn't to say we shouldn't try. Um, that is, we shouldn't share the gospel with others. We shouldn't um, want to tell people about Jesus. But maybe to do so in such a way that, you know, we're, we're trying to, um, I guess, get ourselves out of the way so that the Holy Spirit can really do his thing. Because um, I think a lot of times we do get in the way. And especially when it comes to uh, close family and friends and we're trying to witness to them and try to you know bring them into the faith you know there's a lot of well not is but there could be a lot of baggage involved there and and certainly the the message or the messenger might um overshadow the message at that point and you know we we don't always see that because our intentions are are good and honorable and 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 decent and 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 loving and yet uh we forget you know that especially those closest to us have often seen us at our worst uh, have seen us in lights that we wish they hadn't um, and so we, we just have to remember that you know the Holy Spirit will work how the Holy Spirit works and at the end of the day we have to give it over to him and say you know what thy will be done whether you are working on this person's heart whether you've you're just about ready to, to grab them or if you've already pass by and and that's just not in the cards um we have to be okay with it which is hard you know again it's that uh, giving up control kind of uh, vibe that uh, we got going on there um and so bringing it back to the text (laughs) since we've only got like a few seconds left um that's kind of what i'm getting from here just with all the confusion all the um all the people who just don't get it. Um, you got people who don't get it, people who are close but can't make that connection, and then there are people who are flat out against him with the Pharisees. And um, so, yeah, if 
And the thing of it is, if you're if you're feeling like that, if you've been witnessing or or trying to share your faith with somebody and wanting them to to come to faith, but they're just not there, and you think this is like something deficient on you or you're doing a bad job, you know, think about how Jesus did in his ministry. <laughs> how how good was he at uh, bringing people to under to to a correct understanding of him before his death and resurrection? I mean. By the end, there was nobody left. You know, John, Mary, and, and a couple others were at the cross. Everyone else had run and hide, um, had run and hidden. There we go. But um, you know, even Jesus, <laughs> we see it as the example is, he's saying all the right things. He's he's speaking the truth all over the place. People still aren't, still aren't getting it. Um, and so yeah, I, I think for whatever reason that's been kind of on my my focus lately. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's, that's something valuable for you. <laughs> I hope that helps you or benefits you or, or gives you something to think about. So I will leave it at that. All right, well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope uh, you have a wonderful Thursday. I hope this is a blessing to you. And until tomorrow... Peace be with you.